Alright, that's enough of that. I still use Winamp. I'm a bad boy. Hello, children. How's it going? Wait, I'm not Chef. I'm sorry. Bit too much South Park lately. So, I see there's a couple of you floating around out there, and I'm here to answer any questions you have, or uh, if you're just bored, you know, and you want to say something silly, I'll say something silly back. I'm still recovering from a nasty cold, so... I've got this this horrible nose voice. Yes, everything does, in fact, run on Linux. Um, or maybe Linux runs on everything. Sometimes Linux might walk on everything. Uh, I think Linux is on the moon, but I don't remember. Or maybe it's Mars. Or maybe it's both. I have no idea. Um, but Linux seems to go pretty much everywhere. Or maybe it's Linux. I don't know. Should I say Linux or Linux? Or Lunix? I, I actually favor Lunix. I'm also going to blow my nose, so... I feel fresh now. Alright. What do you have to throw at me? Everything still runs on Linux? Are you serious? I'm sorry you can still hear me. I muted the wrong microphone. I have three of them. Okay, well... And eh, that one's out, actually. Okay. It didn't take long. So, I wasn't really expecting anybody to show up, believe it or not. Windows 10 LTSC. I have, um, I had some problems with it. Um, believe it or not, Windows 10 LTSC is actually treated as a different operating system by some people. Um, I have seen software that literally says in the requirements that it does not work on Windows 10 LTSC or it doesn't support Windows 10 LTSC. Um, I can't remember the problem that I had when I tried it. I think it had something to do with the uh, the media player I use, but it's been a while. But I've actually seen problems with that. So Windows 10 LTSC, the only reason that I wouldn't use it is because there are some things that won't work with it. And if you're going to run Windows, you might as well be able to run the things that run on Windows, right? So that's kind of the problem. Uh, yes, uh, what you said there, Schizoid, about it's now our duty to steal from Microsoft. Best username, by the way. All of you. Um, all one of you. Yeah, steal from Microsoft. I, I fully endorse stealing from Microsoft. I don't know what you'd steal. Maybe some free handouts or... Uh, I hear that they offer some Linux ISOs for, uh, for theft. Uh, I think it's called Windows Subsystem for Linux. But hey, you know, that's my cover and I'm sticking to it. Uh, to help your channel, reach out to Paul or Chris from Technomics. Uh, you know what's funny is that there are actually so many people. I'm going to punch up a search for that right now. So thank you for that recommendation. I'll look them up and see if I can hook up with them. Um, it, I have, I did not realize how many tech channels there actually are that have a metric ton of subscribers. Holy crap. Um, I, when I started digging around at like where people are getting recommended from in the analytics, like this, oh, your video showed up here. I was pretty surprised that there's as many channels as there are that are both technologically inclined and absolutely massive. And it's hard to feel like, or it's hard because you feel like, hey, what can I say that they haven't said? But I'm sure I can say something um, just waiting on the brain to start working, you know? Um, yes, I'm one cynical dude. That's, that is my superpower. I don't trust anything or anyone, and I think everything is bullshit, including myself. I am not excluded. Uh, I am an equal opportunity hater. What you got here? Uh, atomized Android, Windows, and da, 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 da. you know what? The problem is with the LTSC thing, like I said, there's some software I saw recently that said that it wouldn't work on it, that it explicitly would not work on it, and it might have even been DaVinci Resolve, but I can't remember. Um, I really don't remember, but there are some things that don't work on it, and that's kind of a pain in the ass. It doesn't really help if you want to run Windows and you run a run Windows software, but you can't run Windows software because you're running the wrong Windows because Windows 10 LTSC isn't Windows, I guess. Uh, you know, I've never looked into Windows Ameliorated, but people keep on mentioning it. I probably should look that up right now and give you my completely uninformed opinion on what Google says. I'm sorry what DuckDuckGo says because I don't use Google. Uh, ameliorated is just a gross word, though, no matter how you cut it. 
Uh, it looks like they just do all the stuff that I do anyway, probably. Derived from 1903, there are actually some programs that don't work if you have that old of a feature update, so that, that can be a bit of a problem. Um, I could see that coming up. I gotta be honest, if you're going to use these modified versions of Windows 10, at some point, you probably should just use Linux and get over it. I mean, seriously, um, Linux has come a long way. Open source has come a long way. There are some things that you can't do with it, but it overall, I, I do recommend actually trying Linux. There's no reason not to. Um, I'm gonna take these off for a second because secure boot can be turned off so that you can boot whatever you want easily. And live CDs and USBs exist and they're very easy to make. So, you know, the only thing stopping you is um, the fact that every manufacturer has a different frigging key combination to get into their BIOS settings to turn the stupid boot thing off and switch boot devices around. Uh, and HP makes you type a password. Are you are you sure? Are you are you sure? This this is secure boot ASMR. Are you really sure? From HP, are you really sure that you want to turn off secure boot? Because if you want to turn off secure boot, you're gonna have to give us four digits to show us that you're complying. Yes, we're HP. We stand for Hot Pocket. I mean Hewlett Packard. I mean Hot Pocket. Okay. All right. I've had enough of myself. What else you got for me? Uh, I am I am tacking Umbridge. Hey, leave Umbridge alone. What do they do to you? Um. Let's see. I can't touch any MS products. Well. I understand. There are some people who have allergies. If if you touch windows and go into a state of anaphylactic shock, it, it is not conducive to using your computer. So, Lunix, anyone? What you got? What you got? What you got? Google is mother. Google is father. I like this CPU UK guy. You can, or girl, or I don't know. You might be uh, you might be in a wheelchair. Um, I don't know what gender wheelchair is. You know what? I'm confused. The internet has confused me to the point that I'm bleeding out of my brain. I think that's called aneurysm and I'm dead. Nope. Just kidding. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you using Enterprise Windows. Good job. Um, don't let Microsoft find out. But yeah, Enterprise gives you maximal control. But it used to be that Pro gave you the same control. So, yeah, I'm mad that they did that. I've been kind of uh, angry ever since Windows 8 and Windows 10. Windows 10 fixed a lot of problems with 8, but it introduced a lot of problems of its own. So I, I pretty much just can't stand Windows, but I use it out of a degree of necessity. Um, there are some things I use that don't run on Linux, and it just sucks. I hate it, but it is what it is. Uh, is this live chat thing still working? Yeah, it is. Uh, what you got for me here? Games, yes, that... Oh, God. <sighs> You can thank the video card manufacturers for that, mostly NVIDIA, although they just open sourced some of the NVIDIA driver stuff. Not all the really important stuff, but some of it is open source, as in you can look at the source, and you can compile it and have it not work, and it only works on a tiny fraction of cards. So, uh, thanks, NVIDIA. I think I think Torvalds had a real good response to NVIDIA, and they're wonderful. Yeah, it's went something like that. Anyway, can't do that on YouTube. They'll get mad at me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, pro oh big red box with a triangle overlord. So you know how I feel about triangles if you've seen my videos. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Oh, Temple OS. I, 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 okay. I do want to say, I really want to try Temple OS. I don't want to use it seriously, but I'd love to try it just to see because it's such an interesting thing. You can't, one person, it's impractical to even make your own operating system at this point that does anything more than task switch and spit out letters on a console. But somehow this guy made a complete operating system and set of applications and he thought it was his divine work. I mean, it's amazing. Um, I, can you imagine being that person? If you haven't seen Frederick Knudsen, K-N-U-D-S-E-N's Down the Rabbit Hole video on Terry Davis. Davies? Davis? I can't remember if it's Davis or Davies. I'm going insane. But um, it Temple OS, his video about that is amazing, and it's kind of heartbreaking. And... Uh, and he had to censor out all the N-words because that guy, he was not quite right, but 
he, he was an interesting dude, and he has his place in computing history that nobody will ever match. Uh, amazing story, and it I can't tell it here because I don't know enough about it, and he did a better job anyway. What you got? Uh, okay, I'm losing it. Live chat's actually live for once. Uh, yeah, LTSC runs super well. VMware, yeah. I mean, it, it, if it works for you, great. And it probably runs 98% of software. The fact that I ran into software that said it didn't was a surprise to me. But if there's software that says it doesn't work, you know, you have to take that into account. Of course, you may not care. I run GIMP. I did that thumbnail you saw, did it in GIMP. Uh, I have Photoshop on this computer, did it in GIMP. You know why? Because GIMP's more comfortable for me because for a while I actually did run Linux as my main operating system. Um, distro, Linux distro for a smooth brain. Anybody who wants to get into Linux, I recommend Linux Mint. Um, Cinnamon's good too, but um, Linux Mint doesn't matter what flavor, but get into Linux using Mint, it'll probably be the easiest transition. Um, Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian, so that's a good lineage to start from. I don't like Red Hat, Fedora, all that stuff. Um, and Arch and Slackware and all that kind of stuff is probably a bit much for a newbie. Uh, let's see. I like uh, ga Gaiman. That's a good one. I need to remember that. That's a good initialism. You dual boot with Kali Linux when you start your laptop. Uh, and it needs to update. Well, yeah, just go to Linux. Just, just do it. Make, cut that cheat, cut that cable. Um, bad patch from breaking your sit. God Almighty, don't get me started. Uh, just, these ladies pay me to come out just because an update was bricking their computer when they try to print. Of all things, stupid. How do you not test that? How does that? How does that make it through quality control? Anyway, yeah, Windows is a bit of a cluster. Um, how does Linux differ from, from Windows? It's a completely different system. Everything works under the hood differently, but it's still a graphical user interface. If you use a browser like Firefox or Brave or whatever, um, it's still going to run basically the same. Some things might be slightly different, but um, other than like the file browser, when you save something or upload something, a browser is going to work the same way on Linux as it does on Windows or Mac OS, as long as it's the same browser. So there's a degree of familiarity, especially since these free and open source projects have made it to the mainstream. Like I'm using OBS Studio. That runs there. That runs on everything. It's going to work basically the same on everything. There will be some slight variances, but it's not as hard to adjust to as you'd imagine. Let's see what you got here. Uh... Because I'm getting behind, I think. Yep. Games. Always a problem with games. Yep, Linux Mint. You got it. Thoughts on Rust. Um, I haven't coded in it personally, but um, I'm hesitant to adopt new things. Um, I've read good things, but my problem with Rust is the same problem that I had with Go. Um, both of them have a degree of toxicity floating about in their communities. The whole... Um, I guess you could say social justice -y. the uh, the attempt to police other people and make it about human interaction and behavior uh, at the expense of code and getting things done and you know basically adults needing to be handled like children. I don't have I I have a major problem with adults being treated like children. You can either be a mature adult in the room or you can get the fuck out. And that's all there is to it. It shouldn't be more complicated than that. But um, look if you're interested in that problem, look up rules lawyering and it's unfortunate that technology's getting nuked because of people. But that is the case. It's something that, you know, when I was growing up and I learned to program when I was a kid and I just grew my skills organically over time, I started to realize as more and more of this stuff becomes collaborative over the internet especially, people can kill projects. And um, over the past decade or so, what I've witnessed in computing is that people do kill projects. They kill them hard, put them six feet under. Um, a whole lot of people who are primarily trying to use those projects as a jumping off point for themselves to gain clout rather than for the love of coding or computing or the hobby or any of that. 
uh, it's more nefarious purposes, status and such. You can see the same thing happen like with the Halo franchise and the show, but I don't want to get that far into that. Let's keep it to computers and try to avoid the whole social aspect of it because um, I could go down that rabbit hole and chase off half my subscribers overnight, I think. Um, let's see, let's see. I think I'm losing the chat. Everybody's sort of scrolling away from me. Uh, you want to know how to get your Win 10 box to stop updating on its own? I used a combination of general policies and deleting the update keys, um, just to be sure. But, you know, let's see. So I've lost my place in the chat. Templo asks again, where are we? Where are we? We are at... Uh, Linux Mint or Pop! OS. I've not tried Pop! OS, but I will. I will, because I keep seeing it come up. Um, we got one vote for Linux Mint. And... 8.1, you're still running Windows 8.1. I mean, good for you, I guess. Um, it's less spyware-y than Windows 10, although I hate the start menu and the charm bar makes me angry. That's coming up in the UI documentary. Windows 8 is going to feature very, very prominently in that video. The charm bar is probably the thing that pisses me off more than anything, and just, I don't want to talk about it right now. It just, I get angry. Seriously, the charm bar makes me furious. Okay, my blood pressure's going through the roof, and it's not just because I'm fat. It's because Windows 8's going to kill me. Uh, uh, I don't know about blocking small developers if they won't pay Microsoft. You could argue that um, if Microsoft... Microsoft kind of already has that going with Windows Defender and the whole this program has not is not guaranteed to run safely thing where it's you know smart screen where anything you run it's like yo you can't run this but if you want to make an exception and my answer to that is turn it off no exceptions who is mowing out there good lord so there's going to be some noise because someone's mowing and i don't know yeah um actually let me check on that I don't know if they're going to be mowing my lawn. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's see. What a great time. Start a live stream. and Just a short live stream and the mowers show up. <sighs> yep, you, may, you use GIMP for thumbnails too? Yep, and the graphics performance on Linux, that's the problem. But hey, if you don't, if you don't play 3D games, if you don't need tons of 3D performance like that, it's great. Um, we'll get into that eventually. Linux is probably becoming really popular lately, yes, um, because the problem is that Windows is getting really bad. Um, I have a computer, actually, I don't know where I set it. Um, no, I do know where I set it. But this Dell, this one right here, I have this computer specifically to run Windows 10. I got this in exchange for some work instead of payment. And it runs Windows 10, and that's why I'm going to put it over here in quarantine and not touch it again for the remainder of this live stream for fear that the Illuminati will triangle me in the butt. Okay, back to what I was thinking, which was nothing. Um, yes, you're going to see Linux referenced a lot more because Windows 11 is bloaty. It's Honestly, the menu transitions alone make me furious. They're very slow. It's like using an Android phone with all the animations turned on and set to a really slow speed uh, through the developer options. It's very frustrating. Um, can't find settings. There are some settings that they've eliminated that are very important to me, and they're gone. Um, one guy in the comments, actually, I want to highlight this. He keeps preaching for Windows 11, and I told him, you know, Windows 11 is just trash. That's the end of the story. And he's like, well, no, you're just, you just don't understand how to use it. You know, well, you just tell me something, you know, whatever you have a problem with, and I'll educate you. And I'm like, fine, okay. Tell me how in Windows 11 to associate all of the file types that a program can handle with that program in bulk instead of going, drop down, pick this one, drop down, pick this one, drop down, pick this one. For the hundred or so that... MPCHC, for example, can handle, or LibreOffice can handle. Tell me how to do that. Because when I went digging through all the settings, it wasn't there. And you used to be able to do it in Windows 10 before they took the setting panel away. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there are things that they have taken away and not replaced that I deem important. All right. What do we have here? Um, 
back up because I it's actually scrolled away from me. Um, my mom had her printer break from a Windows update. Well, yeah, and I had a uh, an entire school go down because a Windows update caused their computer to blue screen upon printing. So if some people have it worse than you. I trust me. It, it gets bad. Some of these updates are insane, and there's a reason that I have updates locked to manually um, check and not do it. I used to just never update, but you know. Your Wi-Fi got fixed with the latest update. See, that's the other thing is sometimes updates do fix problems. Of course, often you find that those problems were introduced in a previous update. So it's just like, you know, you, you do all this work to get something into a good working state. And next thing you know, uh, an update sets your computer on fire and, you know, stabs your dog or something. Uh, let's see. Adults being treated like adults? No. No, that is illegal. The Constitution of the United States of America says that if you're an adult, you are basically just a child with a beard. Even if you're a woman, you still have a beard. It's just invisible. <sighs> Linux in big box stores? Wait, Michelle Fancy, you noticed Linux in big box stores. Where have What big box stores and what location-ish? I, I would be very curious to know if Linux is being sold on mainstream computers in big box stores because that would be interesting. By the way, quick um, quick reference, I just want to let everybody know if you're looking for a Linux computer, something that's tailored more towards as open as you can get as far as hardware and software, System76 does a good job with that. So if you're looking for a machine that's more Linux friendly, more in the spirit of open source, everything may not be completely open because of the way hardware manufacturers are. But System76 makes some good stuff. Let's see. Oh, uh, got to go back up. Um, Microsoft may have removed support for older Wi-Fi standards. That's, that may be true. I haven't, I haven't heard of that, but that could happen. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, WPA, pretty much no one should be using, but WPA 2 and 3, different story. Uh, let's see. Yes, I used to run Linux. Well, what I, what I did was um, a long time ago I ran Linux as my main operating system on my desktop. And I switched back to Windows. I can't remember why. I think it was the need for some proprietary software. Um, then I, I have had brief stints with running Linux as my main OS. Um, since then, they weren't very long. A lot of the problem just comes down to the proprietary software, and uh, that's basically it, is that there's a few things I need that don't run on Linux that, uh, and plus I support Windows users. So when I talk to someone on the phone and I open, let's say Firefox, and I need to tell them, okay, go to this, go to this, go to this, they may not be the same. Firefox may have been a bad example um, because a lot of it's kind of the same now, but um, if you don't run the same system that you're supporting, you can end up with a problem where you're looking at something and they're looking at something and there are some different placements or it doesn't quite work the same or that setting's missing or it's got different verbiage or the button's got a different title, like how Macs like to put OK, cancel, whatever in different places. It can be infuriating. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I run Windows 10 on the computer I'm using right now and on that one right there, but the machine back there that has like 80 terabytes of storage, that's a Linux RAID server. So, um, and my service system's a Linux system too. Let's see what you got here. Uh, installed Ubuntu on a desktop printer was just there. Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens with Windows too, except usually you have to install HP Smart if you have an HP. HP's not who they used to be. They can go straight to you know where. Let's see what else. Uh, Windows 11 with start all back. I have not seen that. I am gonna search for that so that I can look it up later. I've got all kinds of fun stuff to show later. Eight with the classic shell was nice, otherwise a bad joke. Uh, yeah, classic shell was a good remedy. I don't like um, non-native shells like that, but they did a good job of restoring things and kind of improving. I, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I never ran it personally, but I had a lot of computers come in with it. It was very popular in the days of 8. 10 eventually finally made the start menu, um, it's not perfect, but it is at least somewhat practical, um, relatively easy to use, so that eliminated the need. Windows 8.1's, you know, and 8's just the weird start menu setup was the worst thing ever. I don't want to talk about it, but you'll hear plenty in the documentary. 
Let's see what you got. Group policy stuff. Yeah, I've had that problem too. I've, I have this computer is running 21H2 and group policy works to stop updates and Windows Defender and all that. The machine right over there that is my secondary won't comply. So I had to beat it into compliance. General policy or group policy just gets a the policy gets turned off and Windows Defender comes back on and the updates go again. It's it's really infuriating. Um, so yeah, it, it almost is like there's a little Microsoft elf in every computer just working against you. I hate it. Oh, what else? Let's see. Windows Mobile changed to Windows Phone. Well, they killed Windows Phone. They, they put Windows Phone into Windows, made it like Windows 8, and then they killed the whole thing. That a lot of people actually liked Windows Phone and the Zune, and Microsoft killed it. <laughs> That's a story for another day. They killed Control Panel. I can tell you, Ice Vixen, why they killed the Control Panel. They killed Control Panel because they wanted to make the super happy monochromatic settings panel with tons of extra white space you didn't want and didn't ask for be the only place that you could do anything. The problem is that you have things that hook into existing control panels for you know, 20 plus years, but even newer drivers that hook into the old control panel for things. Uh, prime example would be touchpads. If you want, if you have a, let's, let's just say a Dell with an Alps touchpad, typically what will happen is there's a thing that it inserts a tab into the old style mouse control panel that lets you pop open the pointer properties. Now, usually OEMs will also have a little, um, you know, they'll have an icon for, say, Dell touchpad that lets you change those settings directly. But there's still all these old control panel hooks. Um, the sounds control panel hasn't, it basically hasn't changed since Windows 95 as far as the actual sounds settings. Um, for the output and input stuff, it I'd argue it's better than it was in the Windows 95 days. But uh, yeah, it, tossing old control panel has been a massive source of frustration for me. They will lose options, then not put them back in the new settings panel. So what are you supposed to do? Well, I guess you don't get to do that. Maybe you should just use Microsoft defaults like a good boy. <sighs> Windows compatibility with old hardware. Well, the backward compatibility thing, I've already gone off on that in my update video on the Windows 11 thing. Backward compatibility is a great thing. It's what lets you use a scanner you purchased in 2006 with a brand new computer because the Vista 64 drivers still work on Windows 10. That is not a joke. That's actually a thing. And uh, I, I've got an old photo slash slide slash negative whatever scanner that it doesn't work on newer computers with newer operating systems. Um, but you can even though it came out a long long time ago i can still use it i think on i think i can use it on eight and it worked i don't know about 10. it's been a while since i used it but it's in the back if i ever need to scan more negatives i do develop my own color film in my kitchen sink by the way but backward compatibility is generally a very good thing unless it causes severe maintenance problems um, but most of the time that just gets integrated into what they call a continuous integration workflow it's where when you make a change to software you it tests the changes and when it tests those changes it either passes or fails the test and if it fails the test you broke compatibility so can we keep compatibility without making it impossible to progress forward with the good stuff and a lot of times it is. You just have to make a little tweak here or there or handle a special case if it comes up. But for the main path, it doesn't affect anything. It's so backward compatibility, generally very good and not generally a problem. Although I do understand the sentiment behind the um, animosity towards it. How good of a GPU is needed for multiple screen stock platform trading? With, uh, with with multi-screen stock stuff, I set up a six-screen setup for someone. You basically just need a lot of screens. It's not as much about the GPU power as it is about the ability to output to that many outputs. Um, the most stock stuff doesn't use heavy 3D. At most, you get some acceleration. But you're going to have a harder time finding cards with enough outputs to do that many monitors. Um, in general, once you go past four outputs, things start getting expensive and hardware sparse, probably especially today. Uh, let's see. 2.4 is slower but has a longer range, yes. 
Anyone notice scrolling being really weird in Windows 10? Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. I have a lot of problems with scrolling in Windows 10. Um, I'm wondering if what they're doing out there. Sorry. Um, I'm not. I'm not seeing the blurring you're talking about. I wonder if it's smooth scrolling. If you have Firefox, at least turn off smooth scrolling. It makes it a lot nicer when you scroll. Uh, I wish they'd put scroll bars back to where they have contrast and thickness and don't vanish. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Windows Phone and Tablet, biggest crap you've ever seen. Well, that explains why it's gone. Windows 11 will be loved, probably with Android 13. It will have KVM support naturally. KVM, as in uh, Linux virtualization, I'm not sure how Windows will have that. Unless I misunderstood something. Associate file types or regedit. You can't. You can't. It's not possible. Because what happens is in Windows 10, they made it so if you try to associate file types with regedit, they actually have an overriding association thing that if you find it in the registry, it says, it has a thing there that says, do not modify values under this key. So no, you can't do that anymore. All that does is make it possible to open in a program. It doesn't make it so that you can actually open by default in a program. I want to take all hundred something different video and audio formats, associate them with my media player, and not have it ask me later if I'm what program I want to open with. Are you sure? Do you want to associate it? Blah, 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 blah. No, I just want you to leave my media player alone and stop groping me, Microsoft. I hurt from the last time you groped me with your triangles. Please stop. <sighs> triangles. For gaming, I need the best possible lag for, yep, Ethernet and... Uh-huh. Yeah, Ethernet. Absolutely. Phone sucks. Uh, Michigan Walmart is where you saw the Linux machine. That's kind of interesting. Walmart, a Linux machine in Walmart? That's cool. Let's see. Windows is a game launcher. I should use that in a video. Thanks. Windows tablet is a free hand-me-down. Yep. Basically unusable. I'm, I'm going to keep scrolling down until I can find something I can grab. Hang on just a minute, okay? Windows 11 is the new Vista. That's not entirely true because uh, while they did introduce some new security stuff in 11, most of Windows 11's crap factor, if you will, um, which is what was wrong with Vista, it was just horribly unusably slow in the end. And uh, it, it the UAC thing wasn't refined, but... Windows 11 is the new Vista in, in spirit. It's the spiritual successor to Vista because Microsoft just wants us to hate it. I wonder what they're going to put us in immediately thereafter. Uh, let's see. Oh, I need a domain controller. Oh, oh, you cheeky rascal. You cheeky rascal trying to get me into some Windows server or are you trying to get me to do Samba because that's actually a possibility. Samba on Linux can do domain stuff, so, <laughs> and a lot of it. Uh... There's nothing wrong with Dell. Uh, schizoid, there's nothing wrong with Dell. I have, I mean, I have a Dell here. Dell, they, every brand makes all their computers in the same factories in China, somewhere in Foxconn City or whatever. And a lot of them are based on the same reference designs, just with some manufacturer changes, and the manufacturer comes up with the case. But usually, I don't, uh, I'm brand agnostic now. So I don't go, oh, I like Dell, oh, I like HP, uh, oh, I like Asus. I go... What are the merits of this model, and how many people have had problems with it, and is there a trend to the problems? But I go on a model basis. Generally, higher end, more money uh, stuff is better, unless it says Alienware, in which case I think everyone agrees that it sucks. Uh, let's see. Oh, y'all are getting ahead of me. Uh, React OS, yeah, I'm not, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, bad for compatibility includes covering up bad coding. That's true. You're right, and that is a problem with it. I'm running out of time, by the way, so I'm going to have to cut this short. Um, how long can you avoid Windows 11? Windows 10 will continue working for a long time. Windows 7 has been end of life for a while, but guess what? You can still get a modern browser on it, so as long as you've got hardware that can run it, eh, keep going. Uh, yes, Microsoft sucks. I've said that right to repair should include right to ownership of the software that runs the device. What happens with the device that require live service connections to a server to function? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the problem that I have is that if you, I think you should own your copy of the software, not 
like the software itself, but your individual copy, because you can't use the device without that software. So something that would need a live connection, let's, let's think about it this way. You're probably talking about Alexa, for example. Um, presumably with this live connection requirement, you also get some sort of benefit that wouldn't be possible without it. If the benefit is possible without it, you, you that's the end of the story. If the benefit isn't possible without it, you're either paying or have some other re business relationship ongoing. You get the idea. Um, hang on just a second. But yeah, in general, you should own your software. Not not I'm not saying you should own Windows, but if I have a copy of software, if I have like a disk somewhere, I don't have any disks around me. Nobody uses optical disks anymore. But if you have a copy of software, you should own that copy. Copyright law says you own that copy because it says you can make a backup of it for archival purposes. You know, there are a couple of things in copyright law that say you own it. And <clears throat> you buy a piece of equipment, presumably with the promise that you can use that piece of equipment in the way that it's intended. Without the software, you can't use it as intended. Um, that goes into software warranties, merchantability, and fitness for a particular purpose. That's not really my field. I'm, I'm going to just shy away from that for now, okay? I smacked something, sorry. Let's see. Ubuntu only. Yeah, Ubuntu's fine. You don't own Windows. The EULA says you bought a license to use. That is correct. I've gone over this several times. There's a difference between owning your copy and owning a license to use. I don't think that they should be able to... Uh, license to use but you don't own your copy and that's just that's a philosophical argument not a legal one and I don't have time to cover that anymore today I'm sorry uh, let's see show me on the doll will Bill Gates touch me well all of the doll <sighs> okay I'm gonna have to cut it short let's see Michael Dell Oh, you must be an old school guy. Um, all right, I'm I'm out of time. I have to actually go do something else. I have to leave by five, so um, I'm gonna have to cut this short. But let me scroll real quick and see if there's anything else. You've got some last minute stuff you want to throw at me. Uh, Revy OS. I will search that and I will add it to the things to look through. Modded versions of Windows 10 and 11. That sounds pretty cool to me. Gates is a hoarder. Well, I'm a hoarder. I'm a data hoarder, though. Not. I don't know what Bill Gates hoards. I, he probably owns a lot of Gates, though. Um, let's see. All right. Windows 11 on USB. They did? Really? I figured they'd just send you a product key card like everything else. Wow. Okay, so um, there's like a 30-second delay, but I'm going to ask if there's anything else that you want to ask before I go. Any little quick things. Otherwise, I'm just going to say, hey, thanks for thanks for coming to my stream, and uh, I think we'll do a few more at some point in the future. I'm going to wait 20, 30 seconds for your questions to roll in. Do this again. I came on late. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't have much time to schedule it because I had this window, and that was it. Um, I will I will do one where I put a lot more notice out beforehand. This is sort of dipping my foot in the water. See me next time. Thank you. Oh, bring beer next time. Wow. I will. Don't test me. I will. Okay. I guess that's probably about it. Okay. I think everybody's just thanking me at this point, and I really appreciate your viewership. Um, more to come, and the next stream, there will be plenty of notice, several days probably, and it'll be a little bit less noisy. I'll try to do it maybe at night. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and uh, I will send you off with, uh, what does Winamp want me to play? Winamp wants me to play this. So, thanks for coming. Take care.
my friends We're working hard on time, you know But that was all of our losers' dance And we can argue, can't be, can't be tough But I promise to work harder than what you ever found was good 